All right. Hello, fitness world. I hope everyone can see me okay and hear me okay. I'm very excited for today. I know we have a lot of uh, new people joining uh, this online workout, this online session. Um, I want to get started and just give a quick shout out to the Wish Education Foundation. You know, I was really inspired to get involved. Uh, when I heard about some of the amazing work they've done, for example, um, you know, I know nationwide schools have been shut down. Uh, Wish Education uh, Foundation was one of the first to actually provide 4,000 computers and laptops to students in the San Cuyo Valley um, and help them with, uh, you know, continuing their learning online. Uh, so that's very powerful. And I just jumped at the opportunity to want to get involved and help this amazing cause. Um, speaking of Santa Clarita, if you are located in Santa Clarita, definitely check out our sister club, Henry Mayo Fitness and Health. They do some great things over there and have a very high quality training program. Um, they have a lot of online content. Check out their Facebook, like them, or check out their Instagram, and give them a follow. If you have any questions, contact Bill Holstein, their general manager, okay? Um, before we get started, um, I want to give a little bit of background about myself. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of explain the forecast of the workout today. Um, and then kind of just get into it. Um, it's going to be a fun training session. Um, what I always say is kind of do what's best for you. Go at your own pace. I'll be showing you modifications, regressions, and progressions so you can find the right level uh, of intensity for that exercise. Okay. Um, really quick about me. I've been a personal trainer for about 15 years, practically the only job that I've had. Um, you know, and I've progressed my way through the career and through the industry by putting science behind every movement that we do in our workout. You know, there's a lot of fads and trends that are online. It's kind of hard to see which one's right currently and which one maybe looks right right now, but is bad for you down the road. Um, so I want to put the science behind it. I want to choose exercises that won't just condition your muscles, but they're also good for the integrity of your joint and providing mobility and stability when necessary. Okay, lastly, these exercises will have a nervous component involved. I'll explain kind of the first one we get into diaphragmatic breathing. Um, but just like a doctor's office, you really want to consider all three of those systems when choosing the right program for you. And clubs like the Indianapolis Healthplex and Henry Mayo Fitness and Health will definitely do that for you. Okay, um, I have a bachelor's degree in physiology and neuroscience, a master's degree in finance. Um, I've trained celebrities, professional athletes. Um, and I really look forward um, to not just getting you to your goals, but also correcting any type of limitation, any type of dysfunction in mobility and stability, because it's all about getting you to your goals without having an injury take you out from that. Okay. Um, so without further ado, we're going to kind of get started here. All right. Um, so first thing we're going to do, we have our warm up. We're going to start with warming up the exercise. Uh, we're going to warm up the muscles that we're going to be using during the exercises that we perform today. I'm a big fan of dynamic warm-ups before the workout. When we say dynamic, anything with the word dynamic in it just means movement-based, all right? So traditionally in the past, people have kind of relied on static stretches. So essentially, we're trying to hit our full range of motion and hold it at that point in the beginning of the workout. You've seen people do toe touches, you know, quadricep stretches, things of that nature. They've actually found that that's not the best way to go, right? So if your muscles operate on elastic principles. Almost like a cold rubber band, you wouldn't want to take it out to its full elasticity right off the bat. You want to bring that elasticity out slowly. Same thing with our muscles. We want to bring that elasticity and that flexibility out slowly. And that's what we'll be doing with the dynamic stretches, okay? We got a great circuit going for lower body today. It's going to be a little bit challenging. This is cardio strain training, so we know we're going to get our heart rate up. Um, and then from there, of course, you know, the word core is used generically all the time, but essentially we're talking about 360 degrees around your trunk, okay? Those muscles are going to be your transverse abdominals, rectus abdominals, external obliques, and then also the rectus spinae muscle, which is your lower back, all right? From there, we'll do our static stretches at the end, because that's when they're supposed to be done. We'll answer some questions. You know, if you have any questions, please type them in. For those of you watching on Instagram and for everyone else on Zoom, um, please let me know. I'll definitely look back at this session and, you know, uh, tailor my workouts towards these questions and hopefully answer them in the following sessions. All right. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on breath. Work, all right. You know, universal principles. You'll hear breath work in multiple different modalities of fitness, you know, yoga, Pilates. They have different words for it, but essentially what they're talking about is diaphragmatic breathing. Okay. A lot of us, we do chest breathing. Right? But diaphragmatic breathing actually causes you to expand your stomach and contract your stomach. 
all right? So I want everyone to do a quick exercise with me. I want you to take your hands and put them right underneath your lowest rib cage, all right? That floating rib, okay? And now breathe through your chest like we always do. And notice that those fingers don't really go anywhere. And now I want you to breathe through your stomach, diaphragmic breathing. Push out, push back in, and notice how your diaphragm pushes your fingers outside of your rib cage, okay? So that's the type of breathing that we want to focus on when we first get started. From a science standpoint, you're in your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight when you start. We want to get you in your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and digest state. In that state, you're actually more mobile, you're more stable, and you're able to perform movements a lot better. Okay, so everybody go ahead and grab that lower rib cage. I want to take deep breaths. Let's go ahead and do this for 30 seconds. All right. Take your time with it. Focus on your breathing. And remember, if you're using your diaphragm, you're definitely pushing those fingers outside the floating rib. All right, let's keep going for another 20 seconds here. See how everyone's doing on Zoom and on Instagram. All right, good. Hope everyone's having a lovely start to their week. Good. All right, good, everyone should be done at this point. Now we're gonna get into the fun stuff, okay? As I said, we're gonna warm up the muscles we'll use today. The next exercise we're gonna do as a warm up, one set is a reverse lunge, okay? So we'll reverse lunge, and then we'll actually bring our hands directly over our head to utilize that shoulder mobility, all right? So when I do these exercises, I'll give you my sagittal view, which means you'll see me right from the front. I'll also give you my frontal view, which means you'll see my profile, all right? With these views, it's a lot easier for you to adjust your form and put quality over quantity, all right? So we got five reps on each side. We're gonna start with our right leg first, shooting back and hands going straight in the air in three, two, one. Right leg goes back, lunge, hands directly over your head, finish the movement, sticking with the right leg, guys. Shoot back, lunge, overhead, excellent. Right leg goes back, lunge, good. And you got two more here. Slow, controlled movement. Feel every bit of that movement. Start engaging with those muscles. Excellent. Good, good. All right, let's switch it up. Give you guys my sagittal view this time. Three, two, one. Left leg goes back. Hands go straight up. Good. Apologize if my right and left are a little confusing. I think you guys got my mirror image here in the camera. Two. Last two, everybody. Quality over quantity. Cool. One more rep. Left leg goes back. Hands go straight in the air. All right, good. Hopefully everyone did okay with that. Anybody have any questions at all? Hopefully that wasn't too hard to follow. All right, all right, cool. All right, next exercise, we're gonna need a little bit of room here. I'm actually gonna do this one diagonally so you guys can see me. Um, but feel free, just make sure you have some space. I think you probably need around 10 yards here, but we're gonna warm up through the side lunge. And essentially, we're gonna put a hop in it. So I wanna kind of gallop over once, side lunge. And as you guys side lunge, I want you to take your opposite hand and touch your toe. All right, so we'll come back the other way. Side lunge again, opposite hand and toe. Gallop, gallop, lunge, hit. All right, these movements are called ballistic. Excellent. We got 30 seconds here now that everyone's kind of seen the form. Let's go. All right, here we go. Boom. Good. 20 seconds. Come on, everybody. Seven. Keep going. Keep going. Six. Five. Let's check that form out. Four. Three. Good. And feel free to regress it by just locking over. Two. Last one. One. Good. All right, hopefully everyone's pretty warmed up right now. I know it's warm here in Indianapolis. I'm sure it's the same out there in Los Angeles. I know we got a few in Texas and Chicago. And uh, one of my old friends from London. Welcome, all right, good. So we're done with our warm up. Again, we're doing one set of that only. As we get into our next exercise, we don't want to tire ourselves out. We just want to warm up. We got lower body to start, okay? Lower body, very important. I know women really focus on that, but oftentimes, Men seem to neglect it. 
Now you gotta understand, there's a lot of physiological benefits to you working your lower body, okay? You're gonna have increase in testosterone production, you have increase in growth hormone production, and that's gonna allow you to get into the gains that you're looking for when it comes to your upper body. So please do not neglect that lower body, all right? We got some fun stuff we're doing here. Again, something seems challenging, feel free to go at your own rate. Now, first exercise we're gonna do in our lower body step is we're gonna start out with a basic squat, okay? When we're squatting, a lot of people forget this, it is not a complete descend down with your center of gravity, all right? We're gonna push those hips back and hinge, and then from there, we're actually gonna descend down through our legs and push right back up through our heels, okay? So if you have to split it up, that's fine. Hinge, drop. All right, and let's go ahead and do 10 of them, okay? For those of you who are a little more advanced, I want us to get into squat jumps. We're actually gonna drop, go into a jump, drop, go into a jump, all right? So for all intents and purposes, we've got 10 reps ahead of us. We're gonna get started in three, two. Think about your form. Start mentally preparing yourself. One, here we go. I'm gonna start with five with regular squats and then start hitting jumps from there. Everyone else can take their version, all right? Two, and if these even seem tough, I highly recommend having a chair or some type of platform behind you to give you that assistance. Squats are one of the toughest things to go. I got five more, I'm going in my jumps now. Here we go, soft landing, feet are shoulder width apart. Three, four. Five, rest. Good. Excellent. So hopefully on the way up, that concentric movement for all you trainers out there on your way up, hopefully that's how that push is having one feel on. What's up, Aisha? <laughs> all right. Good, good. All right, let's take a five second. We're going to do something called a single leg RDL. All right, we're going to do the, essentially, we're going to have one leg down, soft bend in the knee, and we're gonna hinge through our hip and almost right back, okay? Some of you may not have the mobility to go completely down in that. I know on one of them, just stay in your comfort level. Dysfunctional. Sagittal point of view, again, foot's down. We're gonna go ahead and extend straight down. The great thing about these exercises, this is just the foundation. We can get fun with it, start doing rows, things of that nature, and really increasing the complexity of the exercise, all right? So does anyone have questions on that form? Believe it or not, this is a very challenging exercise to do. I think it took me almost a year to learn as a trainer. All right, good. Okay, so here we go. We're going seven reps on each side, right? So I'm going left foot first, left foot down. Same exact control, same exact movement. One, good. Take your time with this, guys, too. As I said, quality over quantity when you're trying to save yourself from an injury. Three, and still get the results you're looking for. Four, three more. Five, good, 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 good. Two more. Six. Last one, here we go. Seven. Excellent, excellent, good. Hopefully everybody felt that. Let's go ahead and switch it up, all right? I'm going right leg next. We got seven seconds, I mean seven reps in three, two, one. Here we go. All right, fitness world, come on. One. Two. Four, last three now. Five, for those of you who've done this before, really dig in with that heel. Feel it in your posterior chain. Six, and one more rep. Let's make it perfect. Seven, excellent, good, 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 good. Hopefully everybody did okay with that. Grab some rest, wipe off. If you're happy, if you're sweating, and get some water and stay hydrated. Yeah, all right. So, we're back into some cardio exercises, a little bit of the ballistic exercises. We're gonna actually stick with a split squat. So what we did, when we squatted and did our jumps, that was a bilateral exercise, we used both legs. We're actually gonna go into a split squat, which is actually gonna put us in a staggered stance. 
little something like this, okay? Kind of looks like that, right? And the difference between a lunge and a split squat, this is a lunge right here, all right? Notice how much center of gravity is going straight forward and back, right? Split squat, you're already in position. You're literally taking your center of gravity straight down and right back up. Right, so those are the that's the difference between the two different exercises. And yes, we're doing the latter. Okay, so we're going to take this split squat, and I want everyone to do seven on each side. For those of you that are a little more advanced, we're actually going to go into a jump like movement and hit split squats from there. All right, good. Shout out to my fitness director, Michael Clemens, for teaching this one. All right, so hopefully everyone saw that. All right, we're going to get started in three seconds. All right, we got seven on each. If you're alternating, make sure you get seven on each side. Three, two, one. Let's go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Last two. Six. Seven. And rest. Woo! You guys got me tired. Excellent, well done. Or most people would stop at three exercises per set. We're gonna hit one more. We're gonna go for our fourth. Don't worry, it's not too hard. We're gonna go for the glute bridge, right? Again, we're gonna start bilateral. I'm gonna actually put myself up on this stretch table. If you guys have any type of platform, couch, sofa bed, um, you can even do this on the floor. Whatever works for you, I just know sometimes getting to the floor can be very difficult. So if that's not a possibility, Definitely hit these on your bed or any type of semi hard surface. Okay? So for our glute bridge, we're going supine position. Anytime you say supine, please run our back. All right? Feet are about shoulder width apart, tucked in. From here, you can go hands 45, out, 45 degrees out to your side. You can buckle your elbows in here and use them as leverage. And then straight up to the air, and back in. All right? So we're going to hit 10 of these reps. And right after, at the top of the 10th rep for 15 seconds, we're going to go ahead and alternate left for 15, okay? So 10 reps, 15 seconds right after. Does anyone have any questions? We good to go? Hopefully you guys are catching your breath. Three, think about the form. Two, start mentally preparing yourself. Here we go, loop bridges, straight up. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, last two, nine. Here we go on the tenth rep. Alternating. Here we go. Fifteen seconds. We've got five seconds left, everybody. Hips nice and high. Three, two, one, it's down, rest. Excellent job. If you haven't done glute bridges before, you're probably cramping up in your hamstring to that glute area. It's completely normal, okay? Everybody, we completed one set of lower body. I hope you guys all feel good. Let's rest up for about 10 seconds. Grab some water. Grab a towel, because you know we got one set left. And we've already explained the exercises. So on this set, we're definitely going hard through it, okay? And we've completed one set of warm-ups. We've completed one set of lower body. How's everybody feeling with that? Hopefully okay. Okay. Any questions on form? I know, I know Amy wants to raise your hand like 10 times through this workout already. <laughs> All right, good, good, good. All right, everybody. Good. Haley, I'm glad you're feeling good. All right, so one more set to go. Now we know the movement. Definitely warmed up for this. We're going to hit it. Again, we're starting with 10 squats. Regressed, we're using the chair as support, right? And the normal exercise, body weight only. We don't have to make it ballistic. We don't have to jump. Let's hit our 10 squats only. And then for those of you who are a little bit more advanced in your conditioning, Feel free to get ballistic with it and jump up into the air. Only thing I recommend, do not lock your knees out when you land. You want that soft landing, make it nice and easy for your joint feet, okay? Again, it's not just about the muscles. 
It's about the joints. I'm sure we'll talk a lot more about that when we get in the core, all right? So here we go. Exercise one, squats or squat jumps. I'm gonna do my normal five and five in three, two, one. We got 50 participants. I hope everyone's working out. Here we go. All right, five reps. One, don't forget that hip hinge, and then that drop, two. Now get as low as you can without breaking form. Three. Four. Got one last one here. Five. All right, we're going into my jumps here. Two. Three. Four. Five. Rest. Good. Awesome. Awesome. All right, without too much rest here, we'll take five seconds to mentally prepare ourselves. Think about form. Single leg. RDLs. Bonus points if anyone remembers the name of that exercise rather than the acronym. Here we go in three, two, one. Let's go seven on each side. One. Train one with lower back pains. Strong hips can help you a lot. Three. You know, for those of you professionals that have a desk job, even when you're at home, you're probably at your desk, right? Your hips are probably locked up on you. Let's get them moving. Let's get them mobile. Something I'm a big fan of. You've been one of my clients in the past. Mary Pat, Aline, Amy, Bono. You know how big that is and how important that is. And I'm sure in some of the following workouts, we'll, we'll definitely talk about that. All right. Switching sides. We got one more side on the RDL. I'm going with my left, seven reps. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Awesome, awesome. Again, hopefully everyone did that slowly, controlled. I have a friend named Sven Monsa, who might be on this call, uh, this video chat as well. He used to say, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. I always remember that when I'm talking about quality, okay? All right, third ballistic exercise. We got our split squat jumps. Give yourself five seconds. Four, three, two. If anyone has questions, feel free to ask in one. Here we go, all right, split squat jumps. Get five on each side. One. I'm sorry, seven, two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. And rest. Good. If anyone felt pain in their knees, hopefully they're not jumping. They're actually just going into a regular split squat, hit the seven on each side, switching. All right. Last exercise, again, we are a little bit better than doing just three in the set. We're gonna hit four, especially when we have the time. I'm using the stretch table. Hopefully you guys have the floor or something else next to you. We've got our glute bridges, followed by our alternating single leg glute bridges, okay? Three, as I always say, start mentally preparing yourself, two. Here we go, 10 reps, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, last two, nine. Nice and high now. Here we go, alternate 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two. One, rest. All right, good. Y'all made it through one set, one, one uh, set with very minimal rest, all right? So very well done, we'll catch our breath. You know, one of the biggest mistakes I see at the gym, guys, people not getting enough rest time, okay? So if you're going for games, I myself have always been a pretty lean guy, but I'm always trying to put muscle on. You need that rest period, okay? You need your sleep. I would love a lot of time to talk about that. So before we get into the next one, I know everyone's resting. I've got a lot of questions on just like, when is the right time to progress an exercise? 
the best way that I can put it is we go through stages of learning. There's three. Cognitive, associative, and then autonomous. Right? So a lot of our trainers like to use the agility ladder, so I'll use that as an example. At first, when I'm going through the agility ladder, I'm with my trainer. Maybe I'm having trouble through every step. There's no way I can at the same time hold a conversation. It's probably getting pretty frustrating. At that point, I'm actually in my cognitive stage. It takes every bit of focus, you know, and a lot of conscious thought on trying to figure out how to do this movement. Two weeks down the road, I'm working with my trainer again. And now I'm actually hitting it every time I go through. Maybe once in a while I mess up. But I'm still at the point where I'm focusing, but I just can't hold that conversation completely. I'm an associative. I'm, not, I'm neither competent in the movement yet, nor am I a rookie, right? So I'm in that beginning stage where I'm almost getting there. And then finally, two weeks down the road, I'm practicing, I'm doing my homework like my trainer says. Finally, I'm hitting that agility ladder with no problem talking to my trainer about what I did over the weekend or what my plans are for this evening. At that point, it's autonomous. At that point, my trainer will progress the exercise, okay? So that's how you know when the right time is to move forward from an exercise, all right? Does anyone have any questions on that? All right, good. Got a little bit of a TV here, so I'm not just looking out into nowhere. Hey, man, I'm happy, I'm, I'm happy I can help you guys. I really am. All right, good. Okay, so now we're going into core. Again, the often used term, it's like functional training, right? Everyone uses the term. No one really knows what it means, right? So again, we talk about those four muscle groups, 360 degrees around the trunk of the body. And normally, we're going to try to hit all of those muscle groups to provide balance. Today, for all intents and purposes, with the restricted time that we do have, we will be focusing on the rectus abdominals and the transverse abdominals and maybe a little bit of external obliques, okay? So again, the forecast, we're going to hit plank. Not just any plank, though. We're going to have a plank series, so four different planks we're going to do without resting. From there, we're going to do, go into an exercise called the dead bug. I love this exercise uh, because we do it in a supine position and it's really tough to flex or extend your back under load in that movement. So again, it keeps your joint nice and safe with that, and again, conditions the muscles. Those are the types of exercises we're looking for. Of course, you gotta hit those lower abs, right? Because that's what, you know, men and women, I know this is an area that we all wish, you know, was smaller maybe. I know myself for sure, um, but single leg lowering will help us focus on the inferior portion of the abdomen. Okay, so we have those three exercises. As always, to start, we're going through two sets. Normally, if you're working with me, um, I'm, I'm usually hitting three sets. We usually have an hour to work out. For all intents and purposes, we have about 45 minutes. So I'm gonna get you the most bang for your buck, right? Make you feel good for your day, and hopefully I'll see you guys again, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do is a plank series. So I'm gonna kind of give you my frontal view here, and I'll switch it up on the second set, and also give you my sagittal view. Um, but we're going to start in a low plank, okay? So low plank means we are on our elbows. Looks a little something like this, all right? Hopefully I'm, I'm within camera shot here. All right, so that's our low plank, all right? We'll hold that for 15 seconds. After that 15 seconds, we'll come up into a high plank where our hands are directly underneath our shoulders, all right? We want to retract our scapula and at the same time push that floor together. You know, really squeeze in with your hands and your legs. After that, we'll split our legs apart a little bit. Go into a shoulder tap plank, okay? And then lastly, staying in the tall plank position for the last 15 seconds, we'll bring our feet out and in for toe taps, all right? So prior to going to this exercise, I know in the fitness industry, sit-ups, crunches, have kind of been the norm, right? They give us the six pack that we're looking for. But again, looking at the joint, looking at the vertebrae in specific, your vertebrae are stacked on top of each other and two faucets that stick out from the back. When we do sit-ups and crunches, when we flex to our back, we're actually hitting these bony protrusions together. And then if we ever do something called a Russian twist, and rotate our core in that position, we're actually shearing these bones together. So down the road, you know, 10 years down the road, everyone who's doing this, unfortunately, has had lumbar or spine problems. And unfortunately, have to go through laminectomies and things of that nature to fix that, okay? Um, I don't want that for you, so I'm gonna train you for now. I'm training for down the road. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna get started in five seconds. Any questions to anyone? Plank's important, whether you're in the office or at home. 
I hope you can take 15 minutes to yourself and start hitting some of these exercises. Three. All right. Two. One. Here we go. 15 seconds. Low plank. Let's go. You know, get those shoulder blades back. If you do the plank right, you're tightening everything in your body. Five, four, three, two. Let's get up on our hands. Tall plank, hold. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Spread your legs out, hands close together. Shoulder tap, 15 seconds. None of this, no rotating, all right? That's not working your core in an anti-rotation manner. Resist the urge to rotate. All right, and now we're going into the foot tap for 15, y'all. Same thing here, nice and stiff. Five, four, three, two, one, rest. Woo! How's everyone doing with that one? Good, a little different. For those of you that are in shape or maybe still having some trouble with that, it's just a new exercise. The body's just not used to it. That's all it is, okay? So while you're resting, all right, I'm gonna show you that second exercise we call a supine dead bug. Again, I'll use the stretch table behind me. No equipment is needed for these core workouts. And what we're gonna do is get in the supine position. But additionally, we'll get into a tabletop position. So that's 90 degrees at our hips, 90 degrees at our knees, okay? And from here, we'll bring our hands up and extend our opposite hand leg out to about hovering. Right back in. Switch hands. Out to hovering. Right back in for one round. Okay. So hopefully everybody was able to see that movement. Again, one of my favorite exercises because this is very tough. Very safe for your back, but very challenging for your muscles at the same time. Feel free to throw a foam roller in between your hands and legs. Um, you know, a lot of exercises have generic names like dead bugs. We also have scientific names. Uh, this one is called the contralateral hip extension. Um, so we're going to get started here. We got seven reps on each side. Any questions? Two. Everybody stand with me. One. All right. All right. Table top, y'all. Here we go. Okay. I'm starting my right hand and left leg out. Good. One, two, three, four, one and halfway there. Come on, finish strong. All right, carrying over a little fatigue from the plank. Five, last two. How bad do you guys want? You know you're safe, so now you gotta just push. Six. And finish on a perfect rep. Seven. Rest. All right. Good, good. So we've completed our plank series. Okay, we've also completed our contralateral hip extension, also known as the dead bug. All right. It's definitely warming up in here. Please get, make sure you're staying hydrated. I know I definitely will. And we're going to start with the third exercise, which is going to be our single leg lowering. This is a great exercise they've used in physical therapy. And even personal trainers have adapted it now because there are ways to make this more challenging. But again, very safe for your joints, okay? So in order to do this, I'll still use the stretch table. All right, we're going to go ahead and lay on our back. If anyone can uh, remember what this position is, Especially if you live in Indianapolis, I'll give you 10 free fitness bucks to use at our club. Supon. All right, good. So we're going out with our hands on this one, 45 degrees. This one is actually better to have your hands out than it is having them tucked in like so. Um, we'll put our, both our legs up in the air. We're flex our toes into our head. You trainers out there, you know, it's towards flexion. We're going to bring one leg down. This is my right leg. And back up. There's seven reps on the side, right? Cool. So hopefully everybody saw that. We're going to get started here in three. We'll get some rest right after this, too. Keep pushing. Let's go. One. All right. 
Single leg lowering. I got one. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Switch. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Last two. Six, make it count, make it count. Come on, stick with me. Seven, rest. All right, good. One set down, all right? Wasn't too bad at all, was it? All right, three exercises, quick little overview. You know we're hitting plank series, you know we're hitting dead bugs right after that. And then into the single leg lowering, which is almost like a modified version of leg lifts that you've seen people do in the past, okay? So hopefully everyone felt okay with that. I definitely know, um, you know, isometrics and anti-rotation. The version of the isometrics would be a plank. The version of the anti-rotation would be a payoff press. It's kind of hard for me to show you one. Um, just body weight only, but if you're close to Indianapolis Health Flex, please stop by the club when everything does reopen. And I'll definitely show you one in person, okay? But these are the ways that core workouts are going. Days of sit-ups, crunches, the days of no pain, no gain. Definitely over, right? So did anyone have any questions with regards to our core workout in this last set? Because we're going straight into the next one. Give you guys about five seconds to catch your breath. Four. Three. Good. How my Instagram Live followers doing out there? Hey, Jessica. We miss you here in the club. All right. Okay. We're getting started. We're going plank series, 15 seconds, four different versions. We're getting started in three, two, one. Low plank, 15. Four, three, two, tall plank. Transition, hands underneath the shoulders, nice and rigid with the body. Pushing that floor in. Five, four, three, two. Feet apart, hands close together, shoulder tap. Resisting that urge to rotate. Five, four, three, two, one. Good feet close together. We're going one out, one in. 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, rest. Good. All right, everybody. One down, two more to go. All right, if everyone remembers the next one here, we got our supine dead bugs, contralateral hip extension that we call them. Take three seconds to rest, more so to mentally prepare you for the form. Think about how we did it, what position, what movements. What were my cues for you? Two. Here we go. Supine dead bugs. One. Opposite hand, opposite leg. We got seven reps. One. Two. Three. Last two, last two, everyone. Come on. You got, you got three sets ahead of you here. Push through it. Last rep. Set. Rest. Good. All right. Let's take another five seconds of rest. It will go by fast. Hopefully, everyone is doing okay with this workout. Good. Good. Again, look, at, look for those progressions. Look for those regressions. Definitely challenge yourself, all right? Single leg lowering, coming up next. Back on our back here. All right, hands out to 45 degrees. Seven reps on each side, feet are going up, toes flexing towards the head. Right side first, here we go. One. Three. Five. Six. Switch. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, y'all, one more, seven, rest. Good, all right, all right. All right, everybody, we made it through our second set of core. If you've worked with me in the past, you know my famous three words at the end of a workout, set, circuit, and workout. But we're not done yet, all right? I can't stretch you guys in person, but I will stretch you from a distance here, all right? So what we're gonna do next is just our static stretches. So if you're tuning in the beginning, you know I'm a big fan of dynamic stretches in the beginning of the workout and static stretches at the end of the workout, okay? So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and start. As I always say to my clients, you want some type of order with your stretches to ensure that you hit all the right muscle groups, okay? Stretches, when we talk about flexibility, we mean related to the muscle. When we talk about mobility, we mean related to the joint. So for all intents and purposes, we're definitely working on our flexibility. All right, first thing we're gonna do, we'll start with our lower body. I like to go hamstrings, quads, calves, and then from there going to the upper, it's gonna to be tough for us to get some glute work on, uh, but that is something that we can definitely do as well in the later workouts. So first thing we're gonna do, soft bend in the knees. I want everyone to just kind of reach down, hands through your hips, get as close to your feet as you can, all right? No need to touch. Again, the goal conceptually is to feel a stretch in your hamstrings, okay? This is your posterior muscle of your thigh. Good. All right, I want everyone to do that for another 10 seconds here. That's really all it takes every day, 10 seconds. Even when you can't work out, watching TV, watching The Bachelor, definitely hit a quick static stretch session as you're doing that. No excuses. Good. All right, hopefully everyone got that hamstring stretch in. We're gonna go straight into our quadricep. I'm gonna use a little assistance with this because y'all got me tired. We're gonna bring our right leg up, bring our heel back to our glute. And again, don't let your comfortable range of motion. Some of you can bring that glute all the way back. Others, like me, are right, there you go. So stay at a comfortable range and just be the best you, is all I can say. Three, two, one. Can we all switch? Left hand. Good. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. So that's hitting our quadriceps right, right in front of our legs. Last thing we're going to do for lower body is hit our calves. So I want everyone to grab a wall next to you or anything that's stationary and pretty solid, like a heavy desk would probably work. But I'll give you guys my posterior view. Essentially, I'm going to get into this split stance and I'm going to bring my back heel as close to the floor as possible while stretching that calf out. Okay, so I'm in that split stance, but uh, I'm trying to bring that heel as close as I can to the floor. While I'm feeling that stretch in my calf. Seven seconds. Good. One, switch. All right, same thing on the leg. The more you do these, the better you get at them. Okay? I'm sure some of you are like, I don't know if I feel that yet. Just give it time. And I think that's why it is so important as we continue to do this. It's so important to work with a trainer for that standpoint. Trainers hate when I say this, but a good trainer will work their way out of the way. And I really believe that that's through education. Their goal should be to educate you so you can essentially carry your workout on regardless of where your life takes you. You know, um, you should never be dependent um, upon a trainer. Um, however, if you like working with that trainer and you're getting the results, I totally understand if you continue going to them and seeing them. But I know the clubs that like HealthFlex Associates, Indianapolis, HealthFlex, Henry Manfreds, Health, we're all about education. Roadmap trainers. We're really not just trying to get you from A to Z. We want to tell you how we did it and for you to mimic that on that. Okay. All right. So we're done with lower body. We're going straight to the upper. All right. I'm going to start with the arms. Um, I, I can't do chest just now, just because well, I'll probably be out of the camera sight. But I want everyone to take their left hand, make it rigid in terms of your arm, and swing it right across your body. I want you guys to grab underneath that elbow and pull straight in towards your body. Okay. If you do this right, as you keep holding, you'll feel this in the delt area. So let's pull in for about 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good, hopefully everyone felt it there. Same thing, different side. My right hand is going out and across. Left hand is grabbing under. You know I'm pulling in for 10 seconds. Nine, 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Hopefully everybody is feeling that. All right, last two that we're going to do, we're going to go into the triceps. This one can be done seated or standing. I'm a big proponent of doing a lot of things standing. Uh, you know, I think when you do stand, you involve core stability. So why not kill two birds with one stone and get more bang for your butt while doing the same exercise? Right now we're going into our tricep stretch. I'm going to bring my right hand straight in the air. I'm going to bend at the elbow. I'm going to grab at the elbow and pull straight back. All right? So if you do this right, you'll feel this in the posterior part of your arm, your tricep muscle. What I don't want to see is pulling back and then extension at the lower back, all right? This is bad form. This is a form of compensation, which will surely lead to an injury down the road, which holds you back in your goals, all right? So hopefully everyone's doing that stretch. Five seconds. Four, if there are any questions, please let me know. Three, everyone looking good and feeling it. Two, okay, one. All right, everyone. Excellent, excellent job. All right, so uh, let's switch hands. We're gonna go to the left side now, up. Flex at the elbow, grab at the elbow with the opposite hand and pull back. I'm gonna try to check out a few forms here. Good, any questions, everyone? All right, all right, good, good. And rest, okay? Last one to go. This one's a little bit easier. Often neglected are the forearms. I want you guys to go ahead and put your hand like that. All right, so I'm on a horizontal plane. Elbow, I mean, wrist is flexed at 90 degrees. Take the palm of my hand on the other hand and just kind of push back and really try to stretch the forearm muscles. Okay? Go ahead and do that for 10 seconds. Say five, four, three, two, one. I want everybody to switch hands. Do the same thing here as I grab some water. Good. Five seconds. All right, all right, cool. I think now we can officially say set circuit. No workout. Yeah. Appreciate everyone you know, who took the time. On a Monday, I know everyone's catching up on emails. So got a lot of work ahead of them. But I appreciate you guys making your health a priority. As I tell my clients, I guarantee you that will translate into a lot of the things that you guys are doing, whether it be professionally or personally in terms of like being in the activity level, to play with your kids or your grandchildren or having the mobility and stability to do that as well, right? So very important. I'm glad everyone made it. It's a wrap. Again, huge shout out to the Wish Education Foundation. You know, I want everyone to kind of get involved, donate, get active. Their website, all their information uh, in order to help them in that mobile cause they're doing can be found at wisheducationfoundation.org. You know, I hope everyone takes a few moments today to check them out. Um, I know my hometown of Santa Clarita, and uh, I am so honored to be able to collaborate with such an organization. Again, speaking of Santa Clarita, if you are in that county, check out Henry May of Fitness and Health. We're doing a lot of great things out there. Ask for Bill Holstein, Charlene Duzik, Captain Francisco, they'll definitely take care of you. And then if you're out here in Indianapolis or across the nation, you know, definitely check out my club, the Indianapolis Healthplex. We're all about creating four to six week customized programs that won't only get you to your goals in the safest, most efficient manner possible, but will also correct your living stations to prevent you from any type of injury while you are training towards your goals. We're very good at what we do. We have some of the nation's best trainers. And once we open up, I'm very excited for you guys to check us out. And in the meantime, definitely hit our social media. As I said, follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, check out our YouTube channel, Indianapolis Healthplex. Got a lot of pre-recorded workouts, online content such as healthy recipes, um, as well as educational and clinical podcasts um, that can help you know, a lot of our population. So again, I appreciate everyone being here with me. I look forward to you, seeing you guys again. I know some of you I'll see you soon. I'm out. See you.